I was not expecting this to show up today. There's some dude at Harbor Freight. I've, I don't know if this is true, but in my mind, there's some guy that they hired in like the last five years that I just imagine a bunch of people around a big table and he's like, we should start making like better stuff. And they're like, I mean, we could try. Boom. What, what has happened the last three to five years of Harbor Freight? We've all noticed it. The, the product line has exploded and they have like an off-road section now. Whereas you used to go there and they would have two like really cheap lights in a corner and then like maybe like a, a trailer harness or something. Now there's like recovery gear. We have an off-road jack to play with. I don't know what's going on at Harbor Freight, but I like the direction they're going in and I hope they continue to put pressure on companies to innovate. Now, is this an innovation or is this a direct ripoff of the Pro Eagle Jack? I don't know, and I'm not gonna pretend to know, but today I'm gonna find out because we're gonna go to my friend John who races Ultra 4, we're gonna borrow his Pro Eagle Jack, we're gonna bring it back here, we're gonna actually do a real comparison. I don't see enough measurements in videos. I wanna see how thick is the wall thickness of this stuff. What, I'm gonna stick a magnet to things. Is this all aluminum? Is there a part of cheap steel somewhere? I wanna find this stuff out. I know a lot of you do too. So let's assemble this, let's head to John's. I'm curious on his perspective as someone who races Ultra 4. And then let's do like an actual apples to apples comparison and find out if this thing is worth the $299 price tag. So about that apples to apples comparison that I was looking for. Unfortunately, John's Jack is the two ton version and Harbor Freight only sells a three ton version and that's what I have of course. And uh, it's not exactly apples to apples in that instance, which just kind of blows some of this plan out of the water, but that's okay. We can still do some comparison. We can look at build quality. We can look at a bunch of different things. And most of the stuff that you need to know about both jacks is already on their website. So if there is some like comparison details that you're looking for, you might be able to find it there. However, I am more interested in just testing the Harbor Freight version. What do you get for $299? Bucks? Um, first, I want to see if it's a direct copy of the design, which I don't think it is, but I want to see side by side. And then I want to move on to just testing. I've reached out to a whole bunch of you online to see what do you want to see tested on this jack. And this video is going to be really fun because we're going to put it through the ringer. <laughs> we could all name a bunch of different things in the off-road world that we have seen that are just clearly rebadged. Like it's one Chinese company that makes an air compressor and there are 10 companies that slap their name on it or winches or rooftop tents or biofang radios. There, are, There's many examples of this, but this is not one of them. These two floor jacks are completely different. So to be super clear, this Badlands floor jack is definitely not a rebranded uh, Pro Eagle. They're two completely different floor jacks in every way except for one, and that is the wheels. The wheels look like they definitely come from the same place. And because of that, it is difficult to make measurements that you could compare between the two without an engineering degree, because you could say the, an arm on one is smaller than an arm on another, but because they're designed so differently, you can't make those comparisons. However, I do think that you can make a comparison in the frame thickness. On the Pro Eagle, it's just under three eighths of an inch for the outside frame piece. And on the Harbor Freight, it's just over three eighths of an inch. And if you have the three ton Pro Eagle and it ends up, it's it, that thickness is bigger than the two ton, let me know in the comments. I'll pin that so everybody knows. Um, unfortunately, I just don't have one, so I can't compare. But you can see these are not carbon copies. These are completely different floor jacks from completely different companies.
These tests up here didn't exactly go to plan. It's snowy. Uh, first off, my original plan was to huck this jack out of the back of the truck onto a dry or a wet dirt road, but it's so snowy that that's not going to happen. So, um, and then this, I was going to drag the jack with it suspending the rear the rear axle and see like how far we can drag it, but that's that's also not going to happen. This is the reality of like R&D testing whenever you're just doing it like this. Um, you don't get to choose the results, you don't get to choose the weather. So anyway, there's more stuff that's interesting about these jacks that I think we need to compare and that's not something that I need to uh, try and break the jack to do. Let's start with the pros for the Pro Eagle. One, this has been around a while, it's well established and they already do have a reputation in the industry. I'm gonna let you speculate on what that reputation is. I'm not gonna tell you what I think the reputation is because my small pool of people does not represent the overall product quality. So I would look around online, I would kind of get a feel for what people think about these jacks and the company as a whole. I think that these are important things for you to investigate before you drop 600 bucks on anything, right? Another huge pro is not just that this is an established company that's been making stuff for a little bit, but we've got very easy replacement parts to get right here. I mean, it's amazing that I think the first thing that you would need is a wheel and it's amazing. You can just get right on the website. You can click on big, bright, beautiful pictures of every single part so that you're not calling a 1-800 number to describe a thumb screw thing <laughs> so they can. So some person, some operator can try to figure out what that part number is. Um, I talked to Harbor Freight about this and they don't plan on selling replacement parts in this way, but they said that you'll hundred percent be able to get replacement parts by calling you know, probably a customer service 1-800 number and then trying to describe the loopy swoopy so they can figure out what the loopy swoopy is. Um, another huge advantage I think that the Pro Eagle has is the jack accessories are super rad. They've got some great stuff. Um, none of it's cheap. And I think the most, the craziest priced one is the sticker kit that's $140. I mean... I mean, different strokes for different folks, right? I'm not going to judge people who are going to drop that kind of coin on a sticker kit, but I think that there's a ton of great stuff aside from stickers that they offer for their jacks that are clearly very well thought out, and I could see a lot of value in picking up. Um, and I talked to Harbor Freight about this. They don't plan right now. They don't plan on making a bunch of different accessories and stuff for them. So I think that what you're going to see is a bunch of aftermarket companies. I'm going to suspect Swag Off Road being one of them is going to end up making mounts and all the different stuff that you want if you're looking to invest in the Harbor Freight side of things. Now, as far as like pros and cons uh, for the for the Badlands. I mean, Harbor Freight has a really nice breakdown of the comparison of the two with all the measurements, with the price. I mean, the price is despair. It's huge, right? Um, and then I looked into this claim right here, meets ASME, PASE requirements, and I Googled these requirements. This is actually something worth looking into, folks. I, I really do believe that this is an important thing to note. I don't know why this isn't posted on... Pro Eagles website as far as being something that they meet, I think obviously they don't meet it, right? I mean, Harbor Freight claims that they don't meet it. So when you look into this, what these testing requirements are, these are basic testing requirements that um, basically a bunch of engineers got together and said, we want to see the jack be able to jack up 150% of its advertised capacity. Like they have a bunch of tests like that and Harbor Freight has passed these series of tests and is able to use this stamp. This is very important. I don't know if Pro Eagle hasn't submitted to these tests or if they can't pass these tests, but if I was in their shoes, this is something that I would absolutely want off of the Harbor Freight website, and the quickest way to make that happen is to just go and pass these requirements so that us as consumers who actually look into some of this stuff um, we'll have the faith in buying a product that we know is going to meet these basic requirements. The requirements are very smart and they're third party. This is not this is not a series of tests put on by Harbor Freight. This is third party testing that is, I think, pretty important if you're going to get underneath a vehicle that's being suspended. You know, if you're off road, most people don't carry jack stands and we're going to be getting underneath vehicles and working on them with a vehicle being suspended under a jack. So I think that this is something that is pretty important to look into if you're concerned about that uh, before you go and drop the kind of money that we're talking about here, 300 bucks or 600 bucks. Take your pick. It's a lot of money. This is the part of the video that's going to get me in trouble and I'm really cold. So I'm going to try to get through this quick. Where, where do you guys making this stuff? Pro Eagle, 
Harbor Freight, I know for a fact you are both gonna have people that are gonna be watching this video to see what Nate thinks, and which is crazy to me, very humbling. Um, but every time I do a review video now, I end up getting an email from somebody internally that's like, dude, you're, uh, you're talk, talk of the town right now. Unfortunately, by making honest review videos, I've made some enemies in this industry that I, it is not my intention at all. So Pro Eagle, if you see me at King of the Hammers, let's please have a handshake and a hug. And same thing goes for Harbor Freight. I haven't been very nice to Harbor Freight in the past. So <laughs> tell us where this is being made, please. I, I think that a lot of us want to know. I don't like that on either website it doesn't say where it's being made. I don't like that it doesn't say anywhere in here that it's made in China. There's not a sticker on here that says made in China. And there's a lot of people that would be happy to spend extra money on a product if it's being made in the United States. But what it appears from where I'm sitting right now with the information that I have right now, it appears that we have two American design teams that are manufacturing stuff in China with Chinese aluminum, Chinese steel, Chinese bolts, all that stuff, and then selling it here in the US market. And if that's the case, I don't know why anyone would buy the Pro Eagle at this point. Um, and that's me just speaking completely freely. You're not supporting, they both have employees here in the United States. So whether or not you support Harbor Freight or you support Pro Eagle, if they're both being made in China, why spend the extra money? They both seem to be durable products. They both seem to be well made and thought out. Uh, they're both being marketed to me and you that are watching this. So Pro Eagle, if you don't mind, um, Harbor Freight, we know. Everything you make is made in China. I haven't seen a single thing made in America in your store before, right? And that's why it's all cheap. And we know what we're getting into. But Pro Eagle, Eagle's in the name. Your website invokes like the United States like spirit. It is a beautiful website and it is incredible. Give us a reason to spend twice the price. I guarantee you there are people watching this right now that if you post it in the comments that this is being made in Iowa or Tennessee or Tulsa or wherever, they would be happy to spend twice the price. But if this is being made in China, um, I think you should tell us that too. We're big boys and girls, we can handle it. So <laughs> I hope I'm not making any enemies here. I swear to God, if you see me at King of the Hammers, come up and give me a high five and a handshake. If I see you at a booth, I'm gonna do the same. There's no reason to be enemies about this. I just want honest information for all my subscribers and for me personally, because I will go out and buy one of these if I find out that it's made here in the States. Thank you so much for watching my little video, testing these, these uh, or testing this unit. And uh, I hope that you enjoy these goofy review videos that I do on occasion. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next time.